Today, I'm very lucky to be joined by Runway's lead generation expert, Dave Hogan. So welcome, Dave. How are you? Yeah, great. Thanks. Thanks for the introduction, Nick. Maybe if you could just start um, by telling the viewers a little bit more about your um, background in your own words. Yeah, certainly, yes. So, yeah, 20, as you mentioned, 20 years in sales and business development, and in particular in generating new leads. And a lot of that was cold uh, calling, um, which I do actually love uh, doing. Yes, I've, um, you know, written email campaigns and marketing campaigns, and I've redes helped redesign uh, design websites to make them more of a sales tool. And CRM uh, is very important as well, LinkedIn. But a lot of what I've done has been on the phone with a cold call, with a with a, a call out of the blue uh, to, to try and uh, generate new business. And whether that's been selling software to a small business all the way up to large IT contracts with government departments, it's quite often started, the relationship started with a telephone call. Why should high growth businesses be looking at a more structured lead generation model? Um, what what impact does that have on the business? Yeah, great question. And I think the, word, the key word there is structured. Um, they are people are inundated with emails right now and uh, LinkedIn invites and requests and invites to webinars, particularly during COVID nineteen. It's gone uh, really crazy, so they really oh, appreciate. Every it. day you get like five <laughs> new ones. You could attend forty webinars a day, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yes, look, there's a passion and an energy to telephone-based lead generation, but you have to have some metrics. So you have to have some structured approach. For me, that means dedicating some particular time in the day to generating new leads. Um, maybe an hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon, but keeping it the same. I actually have my own little metrics of 60 dials turns into eight really good conversations, turns into two leads. It's as simple as that in an interruption free day. Um, and I actually had somebody just the other day say to me, David, it's so nice to have a phone call. My inbox is full of rubbish, all these emails and, and invites. It's just nice to talk to somebody on, on the phone. Now, the other thing you have to have a structure to is you have to have a structure to your call. And during COVID-19, that has to begin with a good news story. You have to start a, a call with a, a story about either what you've just done as a business or a very similar organization. Maybe you just made a sale with a similar company. That's fantastic news right now. We all love good news stories at this time in June 2020. And also you call them if they've just been in the news themselves, the organization that you're talking to. Maybe they've just done something really cool and you, you, talk, you call and ask them about whether, whether your product or service can help them with the next part of their journey as well. So people are loving about any sort of news about a recent sale, I'm finding that it's my job. I'm calling, obviously, on behalf of Runway, and they're blown away that we're doing well right now, and and they like the fact that we're doing well, um, and they want to get on that that bandwagon, and that's that's the way you've got to start the, the the intro to the phone call. That's fantastic. I think those statistics are like as a rule of thumb. That's really interesting. Those numbers. I I think that if you could. You know, if you can tap anything that gives you repeatable outcomes, you've got to pursue it. You know, the um, if you look at sort of the um, digital customer acquisition um, channels, if we just sort of said, like compared um, email marketing, um, sometimes you can spend a huge amount of time and effort on email campaigns for very little, if any, um, actual genuine response in terms of sales. Um, whereas, you know, 60 dials leading to two qualified leads, that's a, that's a great outcome. Why do you think people aren't doing more of this? Is it because they're, they're scared of the telephone? They're scared of making the cold call or what is it? There's a little bit of that. Quite often, it depends on what the current scenario is. A lot of organisations have become used to getting inbound inquiries. Um, and at some point that either dries up or the quality lessens. Um, or you just start, any growth business starts getting 
fussy about who they do business with and starts going out to to organizations for the first time so then it's normally because they haven't done it before and they're used to people being warm um and yeah there's a little bit you know there's a certain type of person who likes getting on the phone and doing a cold call i think it's definitely a it's definitely sort of a, a skill set needed it's somebody who likes being on the phone and talking to people but also likes listening as well um and likes rapport building i think as well is a really important um part of it as well so it's i think it's yeah it's skills and just basically what your background has been mm. and i i mean you and i met that way so i know that you're very are very effective at it and you sort of do it in such a way that it doesn't you don't actually feel like you're getting sold even though you effectively sold me so it's like <laughs> <laughs> very well done but you know i think you know people are sort of scared of it or they don't know where to start what's your view of, what's the biggest mistake that people are making um when they're trying to do this for themselves um what are they missing out on there's a few big mistakes that um people make or organizations make i think the typical bad sales call is hi i'm brian calling from xyz accounting software would you like to buy our product no we use zero buy kind of thing that's just a it's a disastrous start to a um to a call and also the bad start to the relationship um as well um so it's being prepared it's it's quite often um the other big mistake that organizations make is is not following up correctly with, with uh, after the initial call as well and not listening to what the customer mm. wants yeah yeah and this is where the crm comes in handy for notating exactly how a new customer or potential customer wants to be followed up they quite often tell you quite specific things um and you just need to follow them they will say something along the lines of if you send me the baker's delight case study to me on wednesday morning at 10 o'clock before my 11 o'clock board meeting i'll share it with the team if you call me at 11 o'clock the following day on thursday i'll have spoken to the md and then we can set up a meeting for the following week well that's quite a bit of information so you need to write it down put it in the crm and also then follow follow that so um a big mistake that organizations make is then sometimes bombarding them with other emails calling them before the wednesday um not sending the right stuff um and it's it's really great stuff to um to notate for future for future use because everything that somebody says on the phone is is worth putting into a crm for future reference um the other big mistake is then they sometimes give up on someone who says no um too easily and a no can be quite often can be handled with an with an objection if it's if it's budget or if it's cur- currently working with a current provider then it's it's a temporary no um so what you have to do then is be ready when they are going to buy and again that's a case of just finding out when that will happen if it's october maybe it's a year's time but unfortunately life goes by fast and october comes around <laughs> eventually and so does next year um, but at least your note is there in crm yeah yeah remember when to contact them and you can also contact everybody who said call us in that uh, in that as well so that's a, that's a big mistake and um yeah i think and and also knowing when when someone is genuinely saying no to you as well is very uh important and respecting respecting that and finding out if they ever will be a, a customer and when and when that might be Where do I start? What's the first thing that you 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 think I should be doing? First of all, you've got to have the right person doing it. Um whether you have that already, um or you train somebody up internally to do it, or you recruit somebody to do it. Having that person who can who wants to pick up the phone and and start selling and has a a positive attitude about doing that and doesn't get demoralized when they don't get through to people. That's that's a great starting point. Whoever experienced they are they've got to have a script and the script is not something to be read out necessarily it's something it's a guide to your to your phone call it can have your your story that I talked about before your your good news story it can be um all your best lines can be in there it, it's re- normally a vp it's usually for the first 40 45 seconds of the of the call um maybe with some object, objection handling in there as well but it's important to have a script even i after 20 years use my own scripts if there's a certain message i want to make sure i get across um the other thing that you have to do is you have to 
set bold but realistic targets. You have to give a salesperson something to go for, but you can't make them too unrealistic so that the salesperson becomes demoralized. There's nothing worse than a salesperson who doesn't think that they can make target. And I think, yeah, there's a sort of a resilience and learning from mistakes and keep using your winning lines. If you're finding that a line is really resonating with with uh, potential customers, then just keep using it. Mm. So I think for those people who are watching um, and wanting to get started, so they've made the decision, okay, so now I'm going to do this. Um, from your experience, what do you think um, could then happen? You know, uh, how soon are people going to see results? Well, the first thing that happens is the customer likes you straight away um, because you're already doing what they've asked for, you've built rapport and you've followed up in the right way. And that already means that you're standing out from the crowd because they're get, getting bombarded by bad sales calls, emails and, and other things all the time. So you stand out from the rest. You also, especially during COVID, you find the lower hanging fruit because people are buying out there. Maybe it's a little bit harder to find them. So maybe you have to step up the metrics a little bit based on what I said earlier right now. Um, but you find the lower hanging fruit by really getting on with the calling, doing those two hours a day of, of calling. The other thing that you uh, get early on is you really start honing your pitch and you start getting used to saying the right things uh, by doing it more and more often. And that's key in the first two or three weeks of doing a, a structured lead generation exercise. And also you start the, these long-term relationships in the right way. You know, you've been working with a customer for seven years, but you've only been, you've known them for seven years, you've only been working with them for five years. So there was two years before you got them, in, got them to come on board. But it probably started off with something and it probably started off with a, with a good phone call out of the blue and um, everything starts from somewhere and if you start off on the right foot that's even if it's a long-term thing it's worth doing it right from the very beginning yeah i totally agree with that well that's fantastic i think you've provided some really good insights there to um our viewers that um could be really helpful um look i um i just want to say thank you very much for your time today just before we finish up, um, is there anything more that you'd like to leave as a parting thought to those people watching on um, uh, as maybe one little secret that you would uh, pass on? <laughs> yeah, certainly, yeah. So I think, well, first of all, just get on the phone and uh, and start doing it and see what happens. You know, talk to people. Tell them about that great new customer you've just brought on board because they should know about it. Um, but then listen to what they're doing listen carefully to what they're doing. People do like talking about what, what their own business is up to. Don't be afraid to ask for a meeting. Um, people sometimes um, are on a great call and then revert back to, I'll send you an email. Uh, sometimes the call can be fantastic, the first call, and they actually want to meet you straight away. At the moment it's via Zoom. But, um, <laughs> via Zoom, um, yeah. But in the future, face, face to face, face again, that's right. Um, don't be afraid. Sometimes the first call is great and they already want to, Talk about something. Don't send them a generic email after that. And then my final piece of advice is just keep learning. We can always, always keep learning. Um, and we can learn from those who are more experienced and older than us, but we can also learn from younger people as well. Um, and I'm still learning every day that I do this job. So yeah. Fantastic. Thanks so much for your time, Dave. And I think um, that's a wrap for us.